minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. In 1979, NASA awarded a contract for a fourth orbiter to join the shuttle fleet. At this point, the test shuttle Enterprise had successfully completed a series of suborbital approach and landing tests, but the first orbiter to fly in space, Columbia, was still over two years away from its maiden voyage. The contract for Orbiter Vehicle 104 was awarded to Rockwell International and construction would begin in Palmdale, California in 1980, taking about four years to complete. The orbiter received its name not from the mythical continent, but from the RV Atlantis, a two-masted sailing ship and the first U.S. vessel to be used for oceanographic research. Atlantis was delivered to the Kennedy Space Center on April 9, 1985, and on a clear morning in October, the Space Shuttle Atlantis lifted off on mission STS-51J. Liftoff, liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower. Atlantis would fly only one other mission before the entire shuttle fleet was grounded for nearly three years following the loss of the orbiter Challenger on January 28, 1986. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. In 1989, Atlantis would make just two flights. The first to deploy the Magellan probe to Venus marked the first unmanned spacecraft launched to another planet since 1978. Magellan radar mapped 98% of the surface of Venus during its four-year mission and produced surface images of such clarity and coverage that they are still unsurpassed 20 years later. Five months later, Atlantis deployed the Galileo probe, a mission to Jupiter. Galileo conducted the first asteroid flyby, discovered the first asteroid moon, was the first spacecraft to orbit Jupiter, and launched the first probe into Jupiter's atmosphere. On June 27, 1995, Atlantis launched on another historic flight. In addition to being the 100th manned U.S. space launch, two days later, Atlantis became the first space shuttle to dock with the Russian space station Mir. This mission also marked the first time a shuttle crew had ever been exchanged while in orbit. Between 1995 and 1997, Atlantis would make seven consecutive trips to Mir and is the only space shuttle to have made multiple dockings. Following a two and a half year overhaul, Atlantis next launched on an assembly and resupply mission to the International Space Station. On this mission, STS-101, 
Atlantis boosted the station approximately 20 miles higher in orbit. STS-101 would also mark the first of nine consecutive missions Atlantis would fly to the station. This included the delivery and assembly of the Destiny Laboratory Module in 2001. The Destiny Module is the prime facility for U.S. research on board the station and is NASA's first long-term orbiting research station since Skylab. In 2008, Atlantis would also deliver the Columbus Module, the largest single contribution made to the station by the European Space Agency. In 2009, Atlantis launched on a mission that many thought would never happen. A fifth and final planned servicing mission to the Hubble Space Telescope had been canceled following the loss of the Columbia in 2003. The crew of the shuttle Columbia did not return safely to Earth, yet we can pray that all are safely home. After an outpouring of support by the scientific community, astronauts, and the public, NASA agreed to reconsider. On May 11th, with the shuttle Endeavour standing by if needed, Atlantis lifted off on its first mission in 14 years that would not include docking with a space station. Atlantis would successfully capture Hubble in orbit, and the crew would log nearly 37 hours in spacewalks as they repaired or replaced several instruments, extending the expected life of the telescope to 2014, when its successor, the James Webb Telescope, is targeted to be ready. Mission STS-125 also included another first for NASA. On May 12th, the following update appeared on astronaut Michael Massimino's Twitter account as he became the first person to tweet from space. In November, Atlantis would return to the International Space Station for a tenth time. And now, with only three scheduled flights remaining in the program, Atlantis is on the pad one final time. STS-132 is the last scheduled flight of the space shuttle Atlantis. After 25 years of service, she will be retired. She will have flown 32 missions, carried over 200 crew members, deployed 14 satellites, and docked with space stations 17 times during her 292 scheduled days in orbit. Mankind's future in space is never certain, but as we send these six astronauts into space, there is one thing we do know. Their place in history will forever be etched alongside the name Atlantis. <laughs>